Dear pharmacy students, uh, my name is Nora Furedi and uh, today I would like to talk about the nervous tissue. In the previous semester you already discussed the epithelial tissue, you are also familiar with the connective and supportive tissue and also you checked some examples for the different type of muscle tissue and today uh, I would like to discuss the last type of basic tissue, which is the nervous tissue. The nervous system can be uh, divided into two main parts based on the anatomy. Uh, the brain with the spinal cord, they together belong to the central nervous system but the nerves, which can be cranial and spinal nerves, with their ganglia, which can be sensory or autonomic ganglia, they belong to the peripheral nervous system. The nervous system can be classified based on the function too. Uh, we can talk about, in that case, the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. In case of the somatic nervous system, the information, the different kind of stimulus are coming from the environment and then when they reach, uh, when they reach our body, uh, those signals, uh, stimuli, are translated into electrical signals and then those electrical signals are transmitted into the central nervous system. After that, the central nervous system made a decision and uh, based on this decision, uh, commands uh, are transmitted toward effectors, for example, skeletal muscle. Just uh, to tell you an example for that, if you want to drink a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, the information about uh, the temperature of the cup, this is the information, and then it will be uh, translated into electrical signals, and then there will be a command, uh, there will be a decision based on the signals coming from the environment that what should I do? Okay, so I put down a to a table this cup of coffee or I do, don't have to do that. So I can control my movement. This is why the somatic nervous system, this is the conscious part, but the autonomic nervous system in contrast with the somatic nervous system, this is the unconscious part. Because uh, in case of autonomic nervous system, stimuli are coming from the direction of internal organs and if there is a need to control the work, uh, the function of the internal organs, commands uh, will be transmitted toward back uh, to the internal organs. So this is, uh, 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 this is the unconscious part, just once again. And here you can see some examples for that. So for example, the blood pressure, uh, the salivary, the work of the salivary glands and also the heart work is under the control of uh, the autonomic nervous system. It has uh, parts, you uh, also or already know, I hope, the uh, sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system and uh, the anterior nervous system, but today I do not detail them. When you thinking about the nervous tissue, many people imagine just one type of cell, which is the nerve cell, it's also called neuron, but uh, you should know, now already you should know, that we have another type uh, of cell too, uh, which are the glial cells, and they together build up the nervous tissue. Firstly, I would like to talk uh, about the neurons. Neurons or nerve cells are responsible and specialized for the per perception, transmission, processing and relaying of electrical signals through synapses. Based on the function, we can classify them. We have sensory neurons. Sensory, sensory neurons, they transmit the information into the central nervous system from the periphery. Then we have also interneurons. Interneurons, 
they work as a mediator cell between two neurons. Uh, they connect neurons with each other, <clears throat> but just within the central nervous system. And the last type of neurons, based on the function, these are the motor neurons. <clears throat> Sorry. And uh, because uh, they innervate effectors, they have role in the control of uh, movement. So the other type, after the neurons, the other type of uh, really important cell type uh, are the glial cells. They have supporting function. What does it mean? Uh, glial cells, they help to maintain the normal homeostasis, the normal wor work of the neurons. And based on their location, we can have uh, more type. In the central nervous system, we have the ependymal cells, oligodendrocytes, astrocytes, and microglia cells. In the peripheral nervous system, we have two examples, the satellite cells and the Schwann cell. Today, I'm going to show you this two cell type, the Schwann, uh, Schwann cell and the satellite cell. Here you can see the general structure of uh, neurons, and uh, I would like to show you what are the different parts of uh, a neuron. Firstly, let's check the cell body. This is the cell body, here you can see it. The cell body is also called perikaryon or soma. The cell body usually contains small granules, and the name of the small granules, this is the uh, nasal granules. The nasal granules are rough endoplasmic reticulum, and if we uh, stain the histological preparation with hematoxinosin staining method, the cell body is become bluish, become basophilic, because of the nasal granulation uh, in the cell body. Usually the nucleolus uh, and the nucleus, nucleus and the nucleolus, sorry, uh, is all, are also visible. Uh, the nucleus is uh, euchromatic and in the nucleus uh, we can see the basophilic nucleolus. You can see here that the cell body is in connection with different uh, uh, type of processes. This type of process, which is a little bit shorter but wider, these are all of them dendrites. The role is to pick up the information by synapses, and then the signal is transmitted toward the axon. This is the axon, here you can see, it's also called neurit. The axon, this is a longer process and thinner process compared to the dendrites. The axon arises at the part which is called axon uh, hillock and this part uh, is so special on the neurons because it contains many, uh, many special uh, ion channels which are needed to develop the action potential. The end part of the axon, here you can see, which is so diversified, this is called telodendrion, but you can use another name for that part. Uh, this is the terminal end three. The cell body of the neuron uh, produces some kind of substances, and those substances have to be transported uh, within the neuron. This transport process is called axonal transport, and if the axonal transport, the flow uh, of the axonal transport is happening from the direction of the pericardion toward the terminal N3, this is called the anterograde axonal transport. Usually, uh, transport vesicles and uh, skeletal elements use this kind of uh, um, transport process. But we have an opposite uh, axonal transport into the opposite direction. Uh, this is called retrograde uh, axonal transport. Growth factor use this uh, uh, flow. Uh, when it is so useful, for example, during the development of the neuron. And uh, in another case, for example, if there is a neuronal injury, 
growth factors use this retrograde axonal transport to help the regeneration of the neuron. The other example for the retrograde axonal transport, uh, this is, these are the neurotropic viruses. Uh, neurotropic viruses uh, attack the the neurons, the nervous system, and usually we mention herpes virus and the rabies uh, virus to this uh, retrograde axonal transport, and they use this flow because using this flow, which is goes backward uh, to the cell body, and this is what this is how the virus is able to degenerate uh, the nerve cell. Here you can see the morphological classification of the different kind of uh, neurons. The first type, this is called unipolar neuron. Uh, the unipolar nu neuron, it has just one process, and this is called axon. Uh, the bipolar neuron, uh, it has two processes. One is the axon, and the other one is dendrite. The third group contains the pseudo-unipolar neurons. Uh, pseudo-unipolar neurons are located in uh, sensory ganglion. Today I'm going to show you histological preparation about uh, the sensory ganglion. In case of pseudo-unipolar uh, nerve cell, here you can see the pericardion, and from the pericardion, one short uh, process uh, came out, and after a short distance, this process splits into two uh, processes. One process is called dendritic axon, and also it has another name, which is the uh, peripheral process, because this locates toward the periphery. And on the opposite side, we have the axonic axon, this also called central process, because this locates toward the central nervous system. And the last type, uh, this is the group, uh, of the group of multipolar neuron. In case of multipolar neuron, you can see that it has many, many dendrites, so not just one, it has more dendrites, and it has just one long uh, and thin axon. Multipolar neurons, uh, they are in the uh, autonomic ganglion and also they locate in the central nervous system. Okay. <clears throat> now you already know that what kind of uh, neuron is that one. So this is a multipolar uh, neuron with many dendrites and with just one axon. The axon is, can be covered by Schwann cells. And if the axon is covered by uh, glial cell, which in the peripheral nervous system this is a uh, uh, Schwann cell, we have already the definition of the nerve fiber. Here you can see the definition of the nerve fiber. The nerve fiber is the axon and the sheet of the glial cell, in, and in that case, the glial cell in the peripheral nervous system uh, are the Schwann cells, which they form a myelin sheet around the axon. The naked part between the Schwann cells, the naked part, uh, on the axon, the naked part of the axon, this is called nodes of uh, Ranvier. The, uh, if we do a cross section here, the level of uh, this, we can see how does it look like in a cross section, that part. And this is the picture what we get after the cross section. Here you can see that in the middle there is the axon cross section, this is the axon, and around the axon there is the Schwann cell which is so wrapped uh, around the axon. And this is called, this type of axon is called myelinated axon or, or myelin sheet. How does it develop? We have a Schwann cell, and then we have next to it, we have an axon. And on the surface of the Schwann cell, there is a cleft formation, and into this cleft, the axon is pushed. And then the, the Schwann cell forms many layers 
uh, around the axon. So this is how the myelin sheet is developed around the axon. If you do not understand my picture, maybe you can understand based on this uh, photo coming from the internet, you can see <coughs> the different steps how the myelin sheet is formed around the axon. The next type of axon, these are the unmyelinated axons, or you can use another name, the Schwann sheet. In that case, we have just one Schwann cell. Here on that picture, this cell, which is uh, uh, gray with the basophilic uh, nucleus. And on the surface, you can see uh, more clefts, and all of these clefts contains axons. Here you can see these are all of them, these are axon cross-section. So the difference is compared to the myelin sheet that we do not have more layers around those axons and we have more axons. So not just one, like here we have more axons, but we have just one Schwanza. We also know naked axons, but uh, today these are not detailed. Okay, where can we see this myelinated and unmyelinated axons? For example, when we do a nerve cross-section. Here you can see, uh, this is the total cross-section, and here you can see already a magnified part from the total cross-section. Uh, we used uh, osmium tetroxide, and after the osmium tetroxide treatment, the preparation has become uh, this kind of uh, blackish. What does it mean, nerve cross-section? What does it mean, peripheral nerve? It's, it is important to uh, determine the definition. So the peripheral nerve, this is bundles of nerve fibers outside the central nervous system. It's good to know <clears throat> because we already know that we, for example, we do not have cell bodies in the uh, nerve cross-section. So what can we see here? is that you can see a thicker and uh, black uh, um, rings with higher diameter next to each other in a group. In the middle, this is the, this is the axon. This grayish, a little bit brownish color means the axon. And around the axon, this thicker and bigger ring, this is the myelin sheet. You can see more next to each other. And between them, you can see also smaller rings with uh, smaller diameter and thinner rings. Those, these are the unmyelinated axons or Schwann sheet. Okay, the next preparation is uh, about the sensory ganglion. We used hematoxylin in treatment. And before I would uh, talk about uh, the preparation, I would like to tell you what does it mean ganglion. The ganglion is group of cell, body, cell bodies or pericardia of neurons outside the central nervous system. And we know that these pericardia, what you can see here, cell bodies, all of them, because we are talking about the sensory ganglion, they pertain to pseudo-unipolar neurons. After that, I would like to show you a magnified picture about the sensory ganglion. Here you can see one cell body, or pericardion. This is another one, other, other. So we have more next to each other. They all of them belong to uh, pseudo-unipolar neurons. Okay, what can we see here? We can see the pericardion and the diameter uh, of those pericardia usually between 50 and uh, 100 micrometers, so relatively big uh, cell bodies. What we have here, uh, the nucleus is visible, and not just the nucleus, the nucleolus is so visible here. Around the, uh, the nucleus, uh, you can see that many cell bodies contains these brownish dots. 
These brownish dots, these are the lipofuscin or aging pigment. The aging pigment or lipofuscin, this is not a real uh, pigment which is produced by the cell. This lipofuscin, this is a waste product of the cell which is not released from the cell, so uh, they store. Uh, and this lipofuscin, this is typical for long-living cells. So not just neurons, they have this kind of uh, aging pigment. For example, the cardiac muscle cells, uh, the, these cell types also uh, have uh, this kind of lipofuscin. Another part of the histological preparation contains these wavy elements next to each other. They run together and these are, all of them, these are nerve fibers. And because already we know what does it mean, nerve fibers, the axon uh, with uh, the glial cell, the sheet of the glial cell, and we know that we are at the peripheral nervous system, we know that they, these basophilic elongated nuclei, they belong to Schwann cell. Another interesting thing, what I would like to show you, that around the cell body there are many cells and they form uh, a regular capsule around the pericardion. These cells called satellite cells and satellite cells these are uh, one type of peripheral glial cells. Okay, They have supporting function around the pericardion of the uh, nerve cell. This uh, slide is the same what we could see here, just the staining method is different. Uh, we used silver nitrate solution and after the uh, treatment the preparation has become this brownish uh, blackish uh, color. What can we see here? Why did we use this kind of staining method. The reason is we wanted to show you this capsule around the pericardion of the pseudo-unipolar neuron and this capsule is formed by the, uh, the uh, satellite cells. And the other reason why we use this treatment, uh, we wanted to show you this uh, process which came out from the pericardion, the short process, and then this one process makes some loop around the pericardion, and then it splits into two processes, and then they leave this capsule, which is formed by the satellite cells around the cell body. On the next picture, uh, you can see already uh, histological preparation coming from the autonomic ganglion. You can see that uh, this is also black, so we used a uh, silver nitrate solution here too. Uh, here you can see the cell bodies, the cell bodies of the multipolar neurons. And if we use higher magnification, you can see that the pericardion is in connection with many, many processes. So not just one or two, we have many, many processes. And this is why satellite cells, they are not able to form a so regular capsule around the pericardion. We are, we, we have here two satellite cells, but not so regularly like in the previous case. The other part of the uh, preparation contains uh, black lines, black wavy lines next to each other, they run together, and this picture is similar, uh, this is like uh, a ponytail, and this means these are nerve fibers here in that part of the histological preparation. After that, I would like to talk about what kind of connective tissue sheets we have uh, in the peripheral nerve. To start uh, from inward out, these are called endoneurium, perineurium, and the epineurium. I'm starting with the endoneurium. So where is the endoneurium? Where can we find this kind of connective tissue part? So if 
this yellow uh, structure is the axon. Around the axon, you already know that we can have a sheet of glial cell. And here we have, this is a Schwann cell to form the myelin sheet. And between the fiber, the nerve fiber, fibers, this bluish uh, part, it means exactly this is the endoneurium part. The nerve fiber bundles, so the group of nerve fibers, this is called fascicle, and the other, the next connective tissue part, which is called perineurium, the, it gives the border of the fascicle. This is a little bit darker, darker blue part in the uh, picture. And then the next uh, type of connective tissue sheet is already the third. Uh, this is called epineurium. The epineurium uh, cover, covers all fascicles in the uh, nerve cross section. So the epineurium, this is the uh, yellowish uh, colored part uh, in the peripheral nerve cross section. Okay, so firstly, I would like to talk about the endoneurium part. So here you can see the endoneurium, but uh, firstly, I would like to show a different uh, part of the tissue because maybe it will be easier to identify where we are. So uh, this is a hematoxylin alzin stained uh, uh, histological preparation. And uh, here you can see uh, once again, uh, a basophilic and uh, and uh, thick rings next to each other, and in the middle there uh, is uh, the axon, and these are called the myelinated axons. These bigger rings with higher diameter, and between them, like small bubbles, they look like small bubbles. These are the unmyelinated axons, and if we, if we remove them, the remaining part, the remaining tissue part, would be the uh, endoneurium. Here you can see the endoneurium part, and if we use uh, not just hematoxin in treatment, if we use azon staining method. Uh, the endoneurium part is become bluish because uh, maybe you remember from the uh, first semester that the azon staining method is really good because the aniline blue is specific for connective tissue fibers and because the endoneurium this is a connective tissue it contains uh, connective tissue fibers mainly uh, reticular fibers, so after the azon staining, the endoneurium part is become blue. What else do we have? So don't forget this is connective tissue, so if we have uh, connective tissue fibers, we need cell type which produce connective tissue fibers and ground substance, so we have different kind of connective tissue cells and we have many uh, vessel cross sections. Here you can see two vessel cross-section, for example. The next and very important connective tissue sheet, this is the perineurium. The perineurium is, gives, it gives the border of the fascicle. Okay, so we are here, this is the perineurium. So in the previous case, when we talked about the endoneurium, we were inside of the fascicle between the myelinated and unmyelinated axons, but now we are at the border of the fascicle. So this part is the perineurium. It has layers, two layers. It has a cell reach layer, which is the epithelial part, and it has an outer layer, which is called the fibrous part of the perineurium. I would like to show you how does it look like if we use as a staining method. We can distinguish easily the two parts of the perineurium because the azocarmine is specific for the layers, the layer which contains many cells. The internal layers, internal layer is become red if we use as a staining, but the outer layer which is 
uh, a connective tissue fiber rich layer is become bluish. So here you can see the perineurium and why is it so important? Because the cell rich layer, the internal layer, this epithelial layer, it contains so many modified fibroblasts and uh, between this modified fibroblast there is a really strong interaction between them and these are called tie junctions. And with the lamina basalis, which is also uh, between the cells, together they form uh, a really strong uh, chemical barrier which uh, able to inhibit stimuli uh, which would enter into the fascicle. So stimuli, these are not able to inf influence the normal homeostasis of the nerve fibers. And the last type of connective tissue sheet, what I would like to tell you, this is called epineurium. Epineurium covers all of the fascicle in the nerve cross section. So here where you can see this whitish, a little bit yellowish color, uh, colored connective tissue part, this is all uh, about the epineurium. What does it contain? It contains many adipocytes because of the mechanical protection of the fascicles and nerve fibers. It contains many vessels and because it is a connective tissue part, just once again, it contains connective tissue cells and connective tissue fibers and mostly we have collagen and elastic type of uh, connective tissue fibers. And uh, this is what, uh, what I wanted to tell you today and thank you for your attention.